I'm very um, unprepared, um, but we'll just like talk about Japanese food because I love to eat food and um, I've eaten a lot of food um, and I've been to Japan. And uh, one of the things that really kind of uh, bugs me is like when I go somewhere and then like people don't order stuff right. Um, and so <laughs> I thought, wait, there are a lot of like anime fans who like love Japanese food. I should just do a little primer course on some basics, um, so that they will be in the know so that they won't make any like embarrassing errors, even though it's fine. It really doesn't matter. You know, I shouldn't be so judgy. Um, so I just wanted to gauge from you guys how of much of an expert you guys are at at Japanese food. They go, you guys are really quiet. A little bit. How many of you guys eat ramen? Okay. How many guys eat ramen that does not come in a package that you make at home? All right. Um, progress. All right. So we'll start with ramen. So, okay. Ramen is the uh, noodles. He's going to, we have a, our trusty, um, tech team over there looking at so <laughs> look at that it's instant noodles that comes up first okay um i believe that um there you go look naruto comes up it's actually funny last time i did this at a panel we would search for some words and sometimes really interesting images came up that were totally not related to the food oh <laughs> All right, we're good. Oh, but uh, Naruto still comes up, which is interesting. Not that it's unsafe. Okay, so ramen. Most people know of your uh, your your instant ramen brands, but obviously, like that's it's still considered um, a fast food in Japan. Um, so for us here, it's kind of been like. Uh, there's been like a ramen explosion in New York. There's like the ramen wars. I don't know if you know about that, but there's like these um, ramen places that are very high end and people are kind of trying to one up each other on the best of the best, right? So um, there's competition stuff. And now you go like, you go to a ramen place, like a good ramen place and you can pay like sometimes almost $20 for a bowl of ramen, which is insane because it's a fast food. However, um, it is uh, the ramen that is coming out of these like really great ramen places are actually, I think, worth it. Um, so basically, when you break down ramen, there's several different categories, right? There's different broths that you can uh, of ramen um, and they kind of like go with the different regions of Japan certain regions are very big on certain type of broths right so any of you guys because some of you guys have eaten ramen before what are some broth flavors that you know miso yes miso is a very spice is not a category of ramen broth what was that? someone else said something else Kimchi is not really, there is kimchi ramen, but it's not a base for broth. So, so far, what did you say? We had miso. Shoyu, yes. Shoyu is soy sauce. So there is a soy sauce based ramen. And then the other one is shio, which is a salt based ramen. But we're, you guys, we're all missing the best pork broth. Pork broth. It's the best. Tonkotsu is what it's called. And that's like the really thick kind of. Uh, you can put in tonkotsu. It's T O N T O N K O T S U. Tonkotsu. T O N K O T S U. Kotsu. Yeah. So it, most the same. So there are other kind of um, varieties of it. You can get a seafood base or a chicken bread base, but really the the basic bases are. Um, Shio, shoyu, and tonkotsu. Miso technically is something that is added. So miso can get added to like a shio. It'd be like miso, the base would still be either one of those three and then you add miso to it. Um, nowadays, because tonkotsu is so heavy, uh, people like to do like a chicken broth or a chick half chicken, half tonkotsu or whatever. Um, uh, 
and uh, or a seafood base or whatever. But the key, the two, three key is the shiu, shoyu, and uh, and uh, tonkotsu. It's a very salty food. That's why you drink a lot of water usually or get really dehydrated after you eat it. But that's the, those are the three bases. Tonkotsu is the most stinky and the most fatty. I also think it's the best. So... Um, actually, I don't think it's the best. It is the best. Um, and then there is something you can get added. There's a lot of different toppings um, to ramen. Um, one of them is called, um, it's koteri, K-O-T-E-R-I. Can we search that? Uh, K-O-T-T-E-R-I, I think. T T E, yeah, E R I. E R, uh, yeah. And you can write tonkotsu or whatever, it doesn't really matter what broth. But. Hmm, that must be a character. So, right. Uh, right. So, it's basically um, like a black garlic oil. So that makes it even more greasy, but if you like this kind of, you can kind of see, I think it's on that bottom. <coughs> I wanna say, oh, where was it? Yeah, it usually gets a black, like you get like black dots in the broth. Like it's this black um, oil that, it, and it's basically, um, garlic that's been like roasted until it's like black and, and, and so it's, it's great. Um, but it's very pungent and even greasier. Okay. So there's that ramen noodles. Do you guys know that at a really fancy ramen restaurant, you can get different thicknesses of noodles from very thin to very thick. However, some restaurants, their ramen masters are very particular and they feel like you should only have thin noodles with certain, certain bowls and thick noodles with certain bowls and they will not let you choose. And then other places will let you choose. They'll say, we want thick noodle or thin noodle. But some places will not let you choose. Okay, so let's move on to toppings. Uh, what are some standard toppings, you guys? Did you say processed cheese? That is not a ramen topping. They do do some, they do cheese ramen. It's like a new weird thing, though. It's not your standard topping. <laughs> With... <laughs> But, uh, you mean top ramen? Are you talking about Kylie Jen Jenner's ramen? <laughs> that, you're talking about Kylie Jenner, huh? <laughs> oh, God, that's so disgusting. Um, that's cup ramen, right? That's the instant kind. Uh, what are... Oh, that's, yeah, no. Actually, there are, there have been, I think there's one restaurant that I go to in LA that actually does have a cheese ramen because um, they get like wacky, weird flavors and stuff. But your standard toppings are eggs. Yes, tamago. And tamago can come in different ways. There is, um, oh, you don't have to write egg ramen. Um, you can write, actually, can you write onsen tamago? O N S E N Tamago. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So I don't even know if these are actually technically onsen tamago because some of these are not. Um, the onsen tamago is the one that looks like a poached egg. So it's over kind of not at the very top, but because not like some of these are the soft boiled eggs, right? So standard um, tamago in your ramen should come like that. If you go to a restaurant and your egg yolk is cooked all the way through at the ramen place, that is bad. <laughs> that means it is a bad ramen restaurant. Um, so the, it should always be, the yolk should not be runny, but it should be kind of a little bit like, um, like tacky to, you know, like that kind of half cooked. And then you can, if you, if you ask for an onsen tamago, it's like a poached egg. So it's like that. It, it doesn't come like hard boiled, like a shell was peeled off. It's like that. It, do you guys know what onsen means in Japanese? Hot springs or spa. So it's, yeah, that's why the egg is like poached. Um, so yes, tamago is very important. Uh, what are, are some other toppings? 
but that's true. Um, Naruto. That's Nar. You guys all know what Naruto is, right? Naruto is the uh, is the spiral fish cake. That is one. Um, Negi is one. This is where you realize that like maybe the creator of Naruto ate a lot of ramen. Uh, Negi is the green onions that goes in it. Menma is also a topping in ramen. <laughs> Menma is M E. Yep. You just can. No, you d yeah, you you don't have to put ramen because they're just toppings. Yeah, see that's menma. It's the it's bamboo shoots, but it's fermented, fermented bamboo shoots. Um, chashu is another one. Chashu is like a roasted pork, so it's the slices of pork that you see. Um, I'm trying to think what other things that you can. There's moyashi. That's the be bean bean sprouts. There's kimchi. Um, there's a. Uh, Kikurage, K-I-K-U-R-A-G-E. I think that's what it is called. It's interesting you have to specify food. These are wood ear mushrooms. They're like, um, they're like fungus, but they're very crunchy. I don't know, and usually they're cut up in tiny, tiny, thin slivers. So that's... Um, but right there in the picture, you can see them as like big whole chunks. But yeah, that's what they look like <laughs> before they're like, before they're cut up and cooked, they look kind of gross. But that's also, I don't know if you've seen those little kind of like brownish, like crunchy little things in there. It's, it's mushroom as a type of fungus. Um, what other uh, things that can you ask for in a ramen? Um, there's like corn and butter ramen too. Okay, I think that's most of it. Oh, so... The thing that I always do with my ramen is I always get fresh garlic. And most places, you can always ask for fresh garlic and they'll just give you cloves of garlic and hopefully a garlic press. You can just press it right into ramen. It's really great if you guys have not tried that at a ramen place. I always put a little bit of vinegar and a bunch of fresh garlic into my ramen. The other thing that I do, because you know how like the bowl is like so huge and really heavy, right? And... You cannot, I mean, how many of you guys actually finish the whole thing where you drink the entire broth and everything? All right, you guys, props to you. I cannot do it. But I usually eat all the crap inside and I have all the soup left and I always take the soup home. I take the soup home and then the next day I'll add like maybe a little bit of broth to it and I'll put my own noodles in it from home and I'll put another egg in it and it, then I get two meals out of one. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. So how there's other, this is your traditional ramen thing, right? So there is a, uh, other, other forms of ramen, right? Um, does anybody out there know any other forms of ramen? Yes. You No, Udon is not ramen. Uh, udon, ra so ramen is the is the it's the it's the type of noodle and and the f type of flour mixture that makes that particular noodle, right? So soba is a different kind of noodle. Soba is the buckwheat noodle, um, and soba actually, when I read this, and I don't know if it's really true, but they what I read about soba was that if you were gluten free, you can still have soba because of the way the buckwheat is, it doesn't affect people who have celiac disease. But that's soba. You can get soba hot or you can get soba, soba cold. And udon is the big white thick noodles, um, which I think is um, made from like your standard flour. Um, ramen has a yellowish color and many people think it has to do with the with like egg in it, but it doesn't. It has to do with some kind of chemical reaction with like the water and like the flour and stuff like that. Um, so um, actually I was talking about another way of eating ramen, which hardly anybody, it, it's not as popular, is hiyashi. You can type in H-I-Y-A-S-H-I. How, how do you, who's heard of hiyashi ramen? Nope, okay. A S H I. What? 
No, no, not soba, ramen. But, yeah. Or hiyashi chuka is the same thing too, but ramen. That's good. There you go. It is cold ramen. It's like a salad. So um, the noodles are at the bottom. See, there's a bed of noodles. And then you can get different type of toppings. And lots of times you'll get cucumber strips or you'll get the egg that you get in hiyashi ramen is um, what they do is they, they put it in a pan, kind of like how you were going to, if you were going to make an omelet, but you make a very thin layer, like a crepe almost. And then they, then they take that and they take it out and then they cut it into tiny thin strips. And that's how I'd see the one on the very, the second row all the way to the left. There's the egg strips over there. Wait, is it reversed for you? Oh. <laughs> it's all the way to the right then on the second row down. Yeah, there, see right there, there's the, there's, those are strips of egg. Um, you can have seafood in it. Lots of times there's corn. Um, there's cucumbers and stuff like that. Um, but usually what happens is they'll give you a little bit of hot mustard. Like the spicy mustard. I don't know. We got a little, we got like a sensor block. You know, it's like, you know, <laughs> where they don't want you to just, they're <laughs> risky. Um, it's okay. I'll just keep talking. So um, they, they put a little bit of like hot mustard, the kind that makes your nose like weird. Um, and then there's like a ponzu sauce, which is like a citrusy um, soy sauce. And um, that's what you mix it in. Hiyashi chuka or hiyashi chuka ramen or hiyashi ramen. That is a very, very um, refreshing summer noodle dish. It's served cold. The noodles are cold. They're chilled. Um, they're really great. That one has oranges in it. That's interesting. And you see the Naruto at the very bottom, that, but it's sliced up. So everything, all the toppings are kind of come in a form that's very like elongated, you know, like, uh, like the noodles. Cool. Um, now, another way to eat ramen is tsukemen. I'm going to have to spell this for you. T-S-U. Yep. Right there, the top one. Oops, uh, T S U K. Right there, the top. Yeah. Has anybody had tsukemen before? So this is dipping ramen. I'm not gonna. You know what? I'm gonna stop. I cannot see. It's dipping ramen. Usually the noodles are thicker, and then so if you see where his cursor is, the thick noodles, and then there's that bowl on the side. It's usually it's uh, usually some form of tonkotsu base, right? But it's super, you know, tonkotsu is very thick and flavorful. Imagine if that is even more flavorful. So it's even thicker and more condensed. And so you can get it with your menma and your chashu. And sometimes you'll just get it with like extra pieces of fat floating around. Um, and what you do, it's, it's, dip, it's a dipping, it's dipping ramen. So what you're supposed to do is you take the ramen and then you pick it up and then you dip it into the very flavorful sauce and then you eat it. Um, and that's how you eat it. And lots of times um, it's served with lime. You would squeeze a little bit of lime on the noodles and proceed to eat that way. Um, it's really, really delicious. It's not that popular in the United States. So it's very hard to find a place that will do tsukemen. Um, it's really, really delicious. Then here's the other thing. When you're done eating your noodles and you're full of carbs and really full and stuff, you'll probably still have some of that broth left over. So what you can do is you ask for hot water. And this is a, it's a stand. They'll know what they, you mean. You're just, when you're done, you'll be like, can I have some hot water, please? And they'll come by with this hot water and they'll pour it into the rest of your dipping sauce and they'll just fill it with hot water. And now it's becomes like a, like a, like a soup base because it's now it's been diluted with the hot water and then you can just drink the rest of it if you choose. Um, but the water that they come by with is not just your standard boiled hot water. It is the water that the noodles were cooked in. So it's got like kind of like a starchy, you know, thick kind of consistency. Um, yes. Okay. Oh, one thing that I forgot to tell you about ramen when you eat it is... Do you remember how we were talking about when you eat your ramen, usually what do you have left over is a bunch of broth, right? 
There is such thing as kaidama. Do you know what kaidama is? Okay, so kaidama, if you want to spell it, K, it, yep, it's right there. Although I really don't think that there's going to be much, yeah, it's, it's going to be like, kaidama is extra noodles, right? So what happens is if you eat all your stuff from the ramen and you still have extra broth, but you feel, hmm, I'm still hungry. I still want to eat some more. You can say, you can say, can I have kaidama, please? And then they will bring you out an extra serving of noodles. Um, it's usually really cheap. It's usually like only like $3 or $4, you know, for an extra. And you can get kaidama as many times as you want um, to, to, you know, uh, finish that out. They don't let you do that for um, tsukemen, though, generally, uh, because it's not cost effective for them. Um, so they'll usually like ask you how many noodles you want at the top of it um, instead of letting you do kaidama at the end, because then you can kind of be like, it's cheaper that to do it at the end. So they don't usually, the place that I go to, they don't let you do that. But that's kaidama. Um, my dog is, do you guys, have you guys, are you guys on my social media? Do you see my dog? I have a dog. Um, my dog's name is, no one could say his name. His name is Ipudo. Um, I-P-P, I-P-P-U-D-O. And then as soon as he, uh, I-P-P-U-D-O, and then you will see what he is named after as soon as you hit into the Google image search. Uh-huh. <laughs> it is a big Japanese ramen chain. You can see there's uh, Ipudo right there, like the sign at the, there's a sign there, and it's 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 there's there it's in Taiwan, it's in Japan, it's they have it in New York, um, they have it uh, all, all sorts of places. Um, but I named my dog after a ramen restaurant, um, and my joke is that when this dog passes away, even though I can't even imagine that I'm saying that out loud because it's like just ha too heartbreaking for me. And if I get another dog, it would be named Kaidama. Ah, right now you guys all get the joke. <laughs> now you're in the ramen no. <laughs> all right. Do you guys have any other questions about ramen before I try to move on to another topic? No? Yes. That I don't know, because I'm not from here. So that I would ask suggestions from the audience. Do you guys have any suggestions for ramen places around here that you feel are really good or places to totally avoid? Don't go to mama noodles. Okay. Say, don't go to mama noodles. What did you say? Okay. But they have like the one general kind of, there is a basic ramen dish if you want to order it, right? Okay. So I will tell you something. When you go into a ramen restaurant, generally speaking, if it's a very good ramen restaurant, generally speaking, it specializes in one type of broth. That's like an indicator of how serious the ramen place is. Oh, see the, see the picture, the second picture uh, on the, the left right there? See the little black dots? Do you remember when I was, gonna, when I was saying about the black uh, garlic oil, koteri? That's what it looks like, the little black dots in the, in the broth. Yeah. Um, okay, so generally speaking, if it's a shoyu place, it's a, everything is shoyu. They might also have a miso version, um, but it's all shoyu based. If it's a shio place, it's all shio. If it's a tonkotsu place, it is all tonkotsu, you know? So it, now there are exceptions to the rule. There are some places that have multiple broth bases, especially in the United States, because in the US, we're very customer service oriented, you know? So we want to have to be able to have something for everybody, right? So um, we generally have that option. Um, but usually the really great places only specialize in that type of broth. And for the tonkotsu broths, the really, really great places, they will boast about how long it takes to make their broth. Can anybody guess around what kind of how, well, how many hours you think it takes to make a broth that is, say? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, that would still, it still is not that there, it, most of the places like the one, there's one, um, 
uh, in Culver City, they actually have a webcam that is a 24-hour webcam that you can just stare at a pot <laughs> of boiling tonkotsu broth. And I think they, they, um, they cook their broth for, I want to say it's like 72 hours. Yeah. So a lot of these places, they cook it for several days. And that's why all, it has so much flavor. Like all of the marrow and the bones and stuff like that have come, all that stuff has come out of the bones into the broth. Um, Another uh, interesting fact, anybody here like a vegetarian? <laughs> Trying to be, okay. So if you go and even if you get a shoyu broth uh, ramen or a shio broth ramen, usually they have some kind of like dashi in there, which is uh, a, a something that they've made that is based usually off of like fish, um, concentrated like fish broth that they've made into real concentrated so they use it for flavor so ramen broth is not vegetarian unless they specifically say it's a vegetarian broth so if you go into a place and it says like vegetable ramen it does not mean that that is vegetarian because usually the broth has like some dashi or has some kind of stock from an animal in it that's why it tastes better um so I used to work at a ramen restaurant and um, we, if anybody came in, you know, cause I was vegetarian for a little bit. Um, if anybody came in, came in asking about ordering the vegetable ramen, I would always ask them, are you vegetarian? Sometimes they just wanted to have vegetables. Um, and if they said yes, I would warn them the broth is not vegetarian, but we can substitute out hot water. <laughs> In which case, they just get all of the separate items just sitting in some hot water. I, yeah, I know. It does not sound appetizing. But, you know, if that's all you can eat, that's, you know, they don't know any different, right? So they're like, yeah, this is good. This is so great. Um, yeah. So, okay. No more questions about ramen? All right. Let's move on to what's the other big classic Japanese food? Sushi. Yeah. Is that what you guys, you said over there? I can't. Okay. Okay. So, who can tell me what sushi is? Huh? It's part of it. What else? <laughs> it's it's raw fish that is served with sushi rice. So, everything here you see is sushi. Some of them are um, rolls, like maki rolls, and then others of them are more of your classic sushi, like the right one, the middle, in the lower middle. That's your classic sushi. Um, it's not just raw fish because you guys have heard of sashimi, right? Yeah. Sashimi is technically raw fish. So if you were to order sashimi, you would get a plate of just raw fish. If you were to order sushi, you would either get what you see, like uh, the, see, that's sashimi. Um, you would get um, the little thing of rice and uh, with a piece of fish on it, or you'd get something that's been rolled up in nori. Nori is the type of seaweed. Um, there are lots of different types of seaweed. Um, one of the toppings that we did not talk about in ramen is wakame. Wakame is this like thin kelpy type seaweed that you put in ramen sometimes. There's also a different kind of like thick, um, flat, slippery seaweed that's more like the kelp that we think of when we go to the beach. Um, there's so many different kinds of seaweeds and different names for it, but nori is the, the flat paper kind that um, you see in sushi. Um, so sushi comes like this, and sushi comes as a maki roll, as a roll, and sushi comes as a hand roll, which is when they take the big sheet of nori and they kind of roll it up like an ice cream cone, and that's really meant for like individual consumption, like one person eating that and, and then done, right? Okay, so what are the different condiments for sushi? Wasabi, right? And soy sauce and ginger, yes, okay. So, wasabi, yes, this is my favorite part. 
What can you tell me about wasabi? It's spicy, right? It makes your nose run, right? It makes you feel like water went up your nose when you're swimming. So what you see here, especially in the top row, is the wasabi root. It is a root. It's kind of like ginger. I will, I'm, I'm willing to bet money. How many of you guys have had wasabi? I'm willing to bet money that most of you guys who have just raised your hand has, nev has never had wasabi. <laughs> most wasabi served in the restaurants, as well as most wasabi sold in the store, is not actually wasabi. Wasabi, this stuff that you see right here, is very, very expensive. It's also very, very rare. The reason you put it on raw fish and the reason the spiciness and the thing that makes your nose feel funny, it has antibacterial properties. So it makes sense you would eat with raw fish in case there's still kind of some parasite or bug thing. Um, it helps kill and cleanse that. So I know it doesn't taste good, but it's a very good thing. You should probably use wasabi when you eat sushi. Um, it's just a precautionary measure. Um, but most of... It's like 99% of the wasabi that you get in stores and in Japanese restaurants, even in Japan, Japanese restaurants, is actually horseradish powder and green food coloring. So can we go to the big image search, the one that was before this one? Thank you. Yeah. And one of the ways you can tell... I don't know if you wanted to zoom in a little bit. Um, can, you, can we click out of this? Actually, that's a pretty good one. Yeah. So this, you can zoom in. Yeah. This is real wasabi. The way they make real wasabi is they grate it, right? So if you get some real, have, has anyone ever grated ginger? And, you, and when you grate ginger, the texture is a little bit like gritty and it's a little bit watery, right? That's what, if you can tell on this, the little lump there, that, that is the texture of real wasabi. Most of the wasabi that you have in Japanese restaurant, it's almost like paste, right? Yeah, it's not real wasabi. It's the, it's the paste that is made from horseradish powder. That said... Horseradish powder, horseradish also has natural antibacterial properties. So it's totally fine to use that, you know, but it's not the real stuff. Um, there's a place I know in um, LA, Yuzu Sushi, they have real wasabi, but they don't serve it unless you ask for it and it's $2 more. Um, sometimes, depending on the root, it can be a little bit more yellowy versus green. Um, but if you get a bunch of wasabi from a restaurant that is really kind of like paste, you know, and that and really thick and it sticks together very well, it's probably not real wasabi. Um, cool. So that's, we're done with the wasabi stuff. Have you guys heard of a uh, anime movie called uh, Welcome to the Space Show? Uh, it's a very, very cute movie, but there's a whole plot of that when you're, uh, they're talking, there's like a whole alien race and they're just stealing wasabi from Earth because it's super rare. And they're using, the, yeah, let's welcome to the space show. It's a really, really cute movie. But there's a whole subplot of, um, of how these aliens are stealing um, wasabi to, on the, to use because it's like black market currency. It's almost like, it's almost like drugs in the alien world. Um, so yeah, because it's also super rare. Um, but yeah, it's super cute anime film. Um, okay, uh, sushi, sushi, sushi. The other topping that you often see is um, uh, the ginger. Now I'm blanking now. I think it's gari, G-A-R-I maybe, right? Uh, ginger though. Yeah. There. Pickle ginger. Um, it's often served with uh, the um, sushi. Now, traditionally, when you eat sushi, most Americans over soy sauce their, uh, their uh, sushi. 
Usually they put the wasabi in their soy sauce. They make this like really th- weird, yellowy, soy saucy, big, thick soy sauce paste. And then they take their sushi with their chopsticks and then they like totally dip it and smother it in there. And then they try to eat it with their chopsticks and it kind of falls apart. That's usually how people eat their sushi. But um, one way that some Jap, not all Japanese people, but some Japanese people use it is they take the ginger and they take it and they dip it in the soy sauce and they brush it on to the sushi. And then they don't, I don't even think they, they eat the ginger separately or they don't eat the ginger at all. So they don't actually use that much soy sauce. They also, most pieces of sushi, um, not the maki rolls, not the rolls, but this where there's a piece of raw fish and then there's a rice underneath, has already a dollop of wasabi underneath the raw fish. So there's no need to put extra wasabi on it. You know, you just can just brush some soy sauce at the top and then you eat it. And it's totally okay to eat with your hands. You don't have to, but it's okay. Um, but yeah, most people I know um, over, overdo it. And when you brush the soy sauce on, you brush it on the fish so it doesn't make the rice fall apart. So, okay. What is, so the other really important part about sushi is the sushi rice. And this is the thing that is the hardest thing to master. Why don't you, yeah, there we go. Uh, do you want to write in sushi rice recipe, maybe, and see what we come up with? Because, and maybe get, yeah, see if there's a, because then you get kind of an idea of the intricacies and like different sushi masters and, and places have their own ways of doing their rice. Um, what does this say? But it's a lot of, there's water. This one has, see there's sugar. This one has oil. There's usually rice vinegar, sugar, oil, and salt in the cooked rice. And it's all about the right balance of all those things. And I don't know if you know, but the reason why that the sushi comes to the piece is like, because literally the guy, if you haven't been to a live place when they're making it, this is what he does. And then he puts the fish on top. So that's why it looks that, like that shape. It's that perfect shape. Cause, and, it's, and it's intentional that his own body heat, his hands warm up the rice a little bit because the fish is cold. So anyway, some people might think that's gross, but... But that's kind of like the most important part of that. Um, does anybody have any questions about sushi? Yes, in the middle right there. Toro. O just means like it's like a respective form it's just, it's like, oh, this and that just makes it like elevated or greater, but it's toro. Yeah, it's fatty tuna. You can Google that if you want. It's very, very pink, uh, right? Uh, sashimi or sushi. Ooh, that might come up as a restaurant though. Yeah, uh, yeah. So um, it's the very, it's not all of these are, um, are, are the toro or otoro, by the way. The first one that underneath, like right there, that's otoro. Um, see, you can see a lot of ribbing in there and there's a lot of white. It's very, very freaking delicious. Um, and, uh, it's usually very expensive and it, um, it tastes like butter. It shouldn't have any sort of fishiness to it. And it really like, and it shouldn't be stringy at all. It's like when you bite into it, it's like, I can't even explain. It's like butter. Um, and it, and it does even have a buttery flavor. It's really great. Um, and it's seasonal. So you, sometimes it's a special, it's usually not always on the menu. But that stuff is really great. Um, there's a bunch of different tunas. Uh, maguro is tuna. This is also a different type of tuna. There's also uh, albacore. Shoot, I'm blanking. What is albacore called? The albacore sushi. which is also very good. It's also a tuna. Is it hama hamachi is yellow tail, I think? Maybe hamachi is, 
Maybe Hamachi is olive liqueur. I'm, I'm totally, I don't have my notes with me. Tamago is egg. Okay, so who doesn't, if you don't eat, if you do not eat raw fish, you could still get sushi. This is why I always make the clarification that sushi does not mean raw fish. Um, sashimi is raw fish. You can get tamago sushi. That piece of egg has a little bit of um, sweet stuff that is mixed into it. It's beaded. And then I think it's like poured into a mold and, and, and then steamed or um, that's tamago sushi. That is totally safe for people who don't eat raw fish. Taco is also used to, that was like my gateway sushi. That's fully cooked. Yeah, right there. It is oct octopus. It is fully, fully cooked on a piece of rice. Um, I'm trying to think what other things come. Yes, all of the eels are, um, are cooked. There's anago, A-N-A-G-O. This one is salt water eel. The salt water eel is usually a little bit, uh, it's, it's, uh, yep, that's it. It usually comes with sauce and anago is, the other one is unagi, U-N-A-G-I. And that is freshwater eel. And that one's more fatty and is not as chewy. And they, use, and they have like a, it, the uh, anago and unagi usually comes with like a sweet sauce with it. You can also get like it on a, on a bowl, you know. So those are pretty much like the safe stuff. There's also various maki rolls. You get cucumber maki rolls. Um, uh, I'm trying to think what else. California rolls are all cooked. Um, and for those of you vegetarians out there, I always need to remind people that imitation crab meat is made out of white fish. So it is not vegetarian. Uh, most people know this, but there are some people who do not know this and they think that it's made out of some plant product. Um, but it's made out of fish. Uh, yeah, so you cannot and uh, have that. I'm trying to think what other things. Yep, uni is, uh, do you guys know what uni is? It's sea urchin. It's really rich and creamy. I really like it. Some people really hate it. Um, it's really expensive. It's a, you know when you eat crab and you open up the like inside the shell, there's that like yellow gunky sh crap that like most Americans don't eat, but all the Asian people are like, that's the best part, I put it on rice. <laughs> it kind of has a little bit of that flavor, but not as bitter like that. Usually the crab stuff has it's a little bit more of a bitter taste. Um, yeah, una I, I love unagi, it's great. Um, do you want to just, can you just do a general like types of sushi search or assorted sushi search and see what we have? Succulents. Oh, that's like a lot. Oh, you know what else they have that's also technically a type of sushi is, uh, 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 oh my God, I'm blanking it, I'm blanking, I'm blanking. It's the ferment, it's the, it's the sweet tofu, it's the sweet fried tofu thing with the rice in it. They call them, like people call them footballs. No, onigiri is not it. Ah, I'm like, I used to, <laughs> <laughs> yes, what is it called? <laughs> what is it called? Oh my God, Google's amazing. <laughs> inari, yes, it, inari, it's inari. And sometimes the rice has other stuff in it, and then sometimes it doesn't. But that is totally safe to eat because it's fried sweet tofu pocket things that they put the rice in. <laughs> yeah, inari sushi. I don't, I don't personally like it. But this man brought up something that is, uh, that is also a Japanese staple and you see in anime all the time. Um, and that is the rice balls, onigiri. O-N-I-G-I-R-I, -I, onigiri. Oh, that is so cute. Oh. How many of you guys uh, have had onigiri? Do you guys get it at a restaurant or do you get it at a convenience store? Okay. Do you put stuff in it? Because 
if you get in a convenience store, they come with things with like tuna salad in it or um, cod roe inside or tuna fish inside or kimchi inside or barbecue pork inside. It's inside in the middle. Also, the wrapper is very tricky tricky to open there's like a pull tab and it pu pulls it like all the way around and then you like go like this and then the whole thing comes out like perfectly if you do it right and if you don't do it right you're like ah oh, crap and then the corner of the seaweed gets torn off but um but yeah that's onigiri um rice balls i think if you just see it the tra these are mostly traditional ways that one the rice has like sesame seeds in it um and seasoned um but these are very plain if they don't have anything in it. Like if you go to the, the store, there is stuff filling inside it. Now there is, see, oh, that one has filling on top. Then you could see some of the ones that are browner. And that's like the yaki onigiri. So have you guys heard of like yaki? Like yaki is used, yeah? In, uh, in a lot of Japanese stuff, like yakitori um, or yakisoba or yaki onigiri. And it just means like grilled. So yaki soba is like like fried grilled like so it's the it's the stir fried noodles right yaki tori tori is like like bird or like chicken it's basically the grilled meat on like on the skewers right so yaki onigiri oh this guy's fast it's yaki soba I like yaki soba it's kind of like chow mein um, but yaki onigiri is the onigiri that is like fried or grilled and that's really Tasty. And then over there, you see the yellow, the pickled yellow radish, the daikon, uh, is a white radish, and it's pickled to be yellow. Um, that is called takuwan. I used to work at a Japanese ramen place, and the first time somebody asked for that, I mean, Koreans also eat that, so it was this Korean couple that wanted some takuwan, and uh, I wrote down on the check takuya, because I couldn't remember what they said, and Takuya is like a boy's name. <laughs> and like the owner was like, what is this? <laughs> what do they, it's like the yellow pickles, and they're like, oh gosh. <laughs> um, yeah. And usually the yaki onigiri, you can see right there, you brush it with soy sauce, and then you, you grill it, and it gets nice and crispy at the, at the edge. It's actually really quite good. I like it. Oh, like Trader Joe sells them frozen? Interesting. All right, I think we're pretty much at time. Does anybody have any last questions about um, Japanese food? I'll try to answer them. I not. I don't know everything, so we could just Google it, though. Apparently, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, we didn't talk about okonomiyaki. Does anybody know what okonomiyaki is? It's like this. Yep, there you go. They call it Japanese pancake. So um, it's all this, you get all this different stuff and then uh, it, at the, you kind of pour it out on a grill and then you make it. Uh, sometimes you go to restaurants and they just like order it and they give it to you. And other times it's, you go to a restaurant, they have a grill in the front and then you make it yourself. Um, and you could also get it with like a manju in it, which is like more of like a mochi type stuff as the binder instead of like a flour mixture as a binder. Um, and yeah, that's okonomiyaki. And so they, you'll, you'll see if you see an anime, them sitting around a grill and like making a thing with a pancake with little spatulas and stuff like that. That's uh, okonomiyaki. Uh, it's good. I like it. It's pretty good. I'm terrible at making it. Mine always falls apart. Uh, um, but that's pretty much it. So I encourage all of you guys. Oh, yes. You have a question? Oh my God, I totally, yeah, go ahead. Oh, um, so I was trying to do a 90 day salad challenge and then I gave up at, at around like, like 28 or, tw I don't even think I made it to 30 days. Like, it was just too hard because it got really boring. And then the other thing is I went to New Zealand and then I was like, I'm in New Zealand. Am I only going to order salad? So I did not. Um, I'm very good at taking Instagram photos of food. So they looked really awesome. Um, sometimes they tasted really awesome. So I need to get back. I haven't been on Instagram for a while. Okay, I will get back on Instagram. Um, 
Uh, and but uh, but I was one of the reasons for that was I would like actively seek out good salads, and I would also actively seek out variety of different kinds of salads. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It made you actually want to eat salad, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Um, uh, yeah, so anyways, I encourage all of you guys to try new things, to go out there, to learn about stuff. If you guys go find an awesome restaurant, if you want to tweet me or tag me on Instagram, I'm at Stephanie Shea on Twitter, and my Instagram is at the number two, and then my last name Shea. Get it? It's a, it's a pun. Yeah, all of my cousins have two, uh, have Shay nicknames actually. Like one of them's like Shay, and then the letter D, and then like another one is like Shay Shay, and that. Anyways, we're we're geeky. Um, so no, it's S H E H. Oh, there's a two. Oh, that's oh, so I'm not the I didn't I'm not the only person that made that joke. Anyways, S H E H. It is Instagram. It's not. Yeah, E H. <laughs> I don't know. To shag. <laughs> no, E-H. You keep wanting to put that A in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, anyways, so the joke is, because I like food so much, that um, if I, if I, um, I'm a Pokemon Go nerd, um, if, yeah, see, there's, <laughs> if you guys ever, if you ever go to Disney World, you must eat at Victoria and Albert's. It'll probably cost you 500 bucks for the meal, <laughs> but it'll be the best 500 bucks you ever spent. Um, and so, um, oh, I went to, I went to Iceland and I partied inside a glacier. It was, it was awesome, except for the fact that um, our bus broke down, like, twice and then when we were in there it started uh, a, a blizzard was going to come and we had to <laughs> evacuate the ice, the glacier anyways yeah long story short so yeah well, I think that one was the last salad I did right there but before that there was like a lot of salads yeah no no, no that's that's like newer if you go down it's older yeah so yeah see it's salad salad ballet shoes salad dog 